Hello? Mr. President, it's 6 a.m. Oh, okay. I didn't ask for five? You did, sir, and the first lady changed it to six. She's allowed to do that? Privateers was, you know, one of those great opportunities to peel the outside of the onion open and say, this is what happens when you open up the wall of the White House and look inside at the First Lady. You're waking up in the bedroom with the, the President and the First Lady to sort of uh, hammer home the idea that he has to wake up every morning with the one person on the planet who's smarter than he is. How many Democrats are defecting? I don't know yet. How many would defect if you asked them? I don't know. You didn't make the calls? I'm not prepared to do that yet. What would happen if you said, send me this bill? with the gag rule, and I'll veto. We're a husband and a wife, having breakfast, getting the newspaper, trying to have, and all he really wants is, do you know, which I think many husbands have felt, and probably reverse many wives have felt, but at that moment, that husband would be like, we just have breakfast, just eat. Well, I think it's also a portrait of a, of, a, of a marriage. You know, I think we see a marriage that feels real to us um, in an incredibly high pressure situation, but where they have their strengths and their weaknesses and their places where they are in sync and places where they've probably always had a little friction. What the hell kind of free world are you running? I really don't know, Abby. The day hasn't started yet. <laughs> She's not elected. <laughs> you know, I think he has to keep reminding her, you know, uh, your name was not on the ballot. And it's a complicated relationship to be, I mean, she's a mother of three girls and the wife of the president, and suddenly she's without a career of her own. It's a hard dynamic. The first lady is in a difficult point in her career and that she's in retreat from her career because of the pressures of being the first lady, and she's a little lost, and yet trying to get something done while she's there. And the claustrophobic office of the first lady where you're not really supposed to get too much done because you're just the first lady. Why doesn't my agenda get anywhere in these negotiations? Well, can I ask you, ma'am, why do you think? Because you're a political snob who doesn't think the first lady belongs on the starboard side of the building. Wrong. Wrong what? Wrong, ma'am. Damn right. It's entertaining and interesting to see a first lady portrayed that way because we never see a first lady portrayed that way in the media. Even if somebody like Josh, who's one of the savviest guys in the building, says, you're out of line, she doesn't care. She's going to get it done. You want me to get the president to declare his intention to veto his own bill? Yeah. No, it's not that easy. But we're going to do it anyway. She's not someone who will take no easily without an explanation. If she's told that we can't support a certain belief she has or a, an idea that she wants to put forth, we better come up with a very good reason why. Leo, does she think of something we can give them? Honey, if we're going to have this fight, can we not do it in front of the Joint Chiefs? It just scares the hell out of them. Some people have often accused uh, uh, Leo of being uh, uh, Bartlett's mistress, and I, I, I would agree to that as long as I could preface it with political mistress. There's this dynamic in the show that is now defined. It's like, I'm the wife and he's the mistress. <laughs> Which I think Martin would be stunned to hear. But, uh, you know, there there is this sort of triangle implied. Good evening, sir. Yes. You look sharp. Thank you. Hey, Abby. Hi, Leo. The two Mrs. Bartlett's, we joke. Um, well, you know... Uh, uh, the man behind the man and the woman behind the man, uh, kind of that triangle. And I'm giving him the advice and, and holding him up in the oval and in the sit room, and she's doing it in the residence. So we both feel great love for the same man. Hon, this is like nerd hot talk. Who is your commander in chief? You are? Yes. Stockard is an actor and Abby Bartlett is a character are just tough and feisty and in your face and not going to play second fiddle to anybody. And I think it challenges Bartlett to be better all the time. She plays off Martin, she humanizes Martin in a way that no other character or actor could, in that she knows him better than anybody else. Well, it's an incredible chemistry that they have. First of all, I think they look great together, their sizes, their looks. But I think it's more than that. It's just a, a thing that fits sort of like a glove to a hand. Abigail. Abby, the kids are eating sugar. Huh? Oh. How you doing? You know I gave the kids candy all the time, right? Behind my back? Yes. They bought their lot. Well, it was for sale and I wanted it. 
I just love working with her. She's such a compliment, you know. Not an ounce of sentiment, which makes it work, you know, because then there's a reality. Uh, I don't get the sense that you ever feel sorry for this first couple. On the contrary, you envy them. They adore each other, and they work as a team. Samuel Mudd set Booth's leg after he shot Lincoln. Doctors are liable in this country. They don't treat the patient right in front of them. Just for the record, this is why we don't talk about foreign policy, which we do, and you don't think we do it enough. Why? Because Samuel Mudd was tried and convicted of treason for setting that leg. So? What so? So that's the way it goes. You set the leg. The patient right in front of them. Yes. I think Stockard has played the angst, the worry, the pressure, the joy sometimes, the love of the man. I think she's shown us all those aspects of being First Lady. She's somebody who can handle, whether it's in life or on stage or on screen, just about anything you throw at her. And I think she carries that quality with her. And that's the quality you kind of want in a First Lady. Her dynamism always intrigues me. And, uh, and, and so and it, that, it's enjoyable to play. You, you, that's what we call it. I'm an actor. It's an, actor. it's an active thing as opposed to a passive thing. Excuse me. You want to take another curtain call? Sure. 